Technological University. Today I'm going to show you my kind of like a project about eye tracking application that I'm using deep learning to do so. So the problems uh, I'm, I'm trying to solve is the, um, I want to address the difficulties of patients or any people that um, are suffering from complete paralysis or some people that um, they were born with no limbs, no hands, no legs, and basically they can't do anything. So they can just like lying in the, on the bed and you know staring at the ceiling fan. So I'm trying to help them to actively control their daily activities by using their eyes. Their eyes movement, I think, is the only thing left that can move within them. So um, what I'm trying to do is to build a VR headset. It's not actually VR. It's just like a, a DIY VR that I, it has a, is, where's the mouse? OK. It has a camera over here. The camera is pointing uh, directly to the eye, one of the eyes. This one is the left eye. And then um, the, the camera will monitor a video-based data, and we will send it to the Raspberry Pi board over here to predict. Uh, it will predict on uh, six labels where to, to monitor like, uh, whether the, the person is looking to the left, the right, or whether uh, he's like, looking up, down, center, or blinking. That's why we need a video-based data, such kind of like a sequence of images. So we're going to use the labels, and we're trying to control a wheelchair. This one is just a demo. So this is a Raspberry Pi robot car that uh, I built uh, to control through the label wirelessly. And also, this is another application. We can use the sequence of label as a passcode, just like a digit, to unlock something. Let's say unlock the phone, unlock the garage, or unlock the door for them. So how do I collect the data? Unfortunately, I couldn't find any public data that satisfied my requirement. So I create my own. I use the iVR headset, the device, to collect the video-based data. So each data point uh, is actually a sequence of 15 image, sample over one second, so it's actually 15 FPS. And it's all containing six labels, as I mentioned above. And they are all balanced because I intentionally do it. And I also sample from five different persons. Actually, uh, I sample on my eyes. Um, the most, like 60% is from my eyes, and the rest is from my friends. And each uh, session of data collection will last like 15 seconds. So it, within uh, 15 seconds, you have to stare or you have to look at one direction or doing the same action within that 15, min 15 seconds. So after that, 15 data points will be created. This is a very expensive, very like um, health damaging process that is, I'm not going to encourage, but no. Well, and after a very long time of data collection, I just only get like 3,000 data points. Which, yeah, this is like, my is 60% uh, of the data, and the rest, four of them, is counted for 40%. So this is, is what the data look like. A sequence, this is a blinking, so you, you can see an image, like some of them are closed, some of them are open, so blinking. So this is the models I'm used. Uh, I have to make sure that models is small enough and lightweight and fast enough to, to be deployed on the Raspberry Pi board, which is very slow. So I have a convolutional recurrent network. So each data frame, each image frame could be fit into a CNN to extract some sort of features. And the sequence of features could be fit into a bidirectional, bidirectional LSTM to uh, predicts the label and the softmax layers. You can see the, CIS, the CN blocks contains like uh, six convolutional layers, and each convolutional layers I do convolution, batch normalization, and relu activation. I don't use any pooling anyway. So the input image is like 64 times 64 times 3 at the bottom. Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm showing you the result validation and the testing, which is quite surprisingly good. So when I train on my own data itself, from my, my own eyes, 
uh, the accuracy is very, very high, and the loss is also very slow. It's very, very low. Uh, it's covered like nearly 99%, which is quite ridiculous. Note that this is the validation and the testing set. It's not the training, it's training accuracy. And also, uh, my data and my friend's data counted into like 3,000 data points. Also get quite similar uh, result. I also do data augmentation too. So, is there something wrong? You may say like, um, you must be something wrong with this. Uh, you have a very limited data. How can you get this high accuracy? I also very doubt. So let's find out. I, I have a demo over here. Where's the mouse? Okay. So this is a demo that I try to do real-time testing, controlling the car with my own eyes. I don't use any others. It's quite, quite impressive. Like in real-time testing, I can estimate that it does make some mistake, but um, it, real time testing is quite like 90% plus. This one is, is trying to predict um, a sequence of labels coded as a passcode for you to uh, unlock something. So over here, I, I try to replicate this example. I look to the right, up, right, and left to open the lock like that. So in real time, uh, it's worked quite impressive, but there's a problem. It do has a problem, so let's pass through it. The problem is, it only works for me. <laughs> well, it, it makes sense if I train it on my own data, my, if I on, only use my own eyes. So that demo just now is that I train the models with just my eyes. But after that, I decided to collect my friend's data too. But first of all, it completely make a guess from other people. Other people, strangers' eyes and stuff, sort of. And also, it com it's also fell on one of my friend's eyes. Even uh, their eyes is inside the, data, the training data set. Well, it also performed very bad uh, in dark condition or very strange lighting condition, like um, different light uh, or for in the outside or indoors, outdoors, etc. Well, some of my friends, like, uh, she has a very big eyes, and it does uh, improve a little bit. But the others, uh, they have very small eyes, and it have no clues at all. And it's fell on me, too. Uh, after for a while, right, I, did, I didn't have a haircut. So the, 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 hair, the hair just covered my eyebrows, and it fell, too. And also, it is also very sensitive to orientation change because um, the eyes, the direction that you see may not align with the di direction of your head. And the di direction of your head align with the direction of the camera. So let's say I'm in this direction of my head, but I'm looking some over here. Then the, in the, from the camera point of view, the direction of your eyes change. So the label just uh, make a random guess which is very bad too. And one interesting property is that the softmax, prop, the softmax core is only goes to extreme, which is very strange, but I think this accounts for the problems. So whatever the class it picks, whether it is right or wrong, it always choose um, a high, very high score. Let's say if it, it cor correctly predict a, t a label, then the score for that label is usually goes to 99.9999, or maybe 1.0. 1, 1 the, rest, the rest of the labels called maybe like 10 to the power of negative 8, 7. Even though it predicts it wrongly, let's say it predicted it as uh, blinking, but it's actually center, the score for blinking is still, so, it's still very high. It's like 0 0.999, which is not going to make sense. If let's say it's like, uh, if it predicts it at blinking as wrong, it should have a very low confidence, like 0 0.5 or something. So this is a very weird phenomenon, but I'm trying to figure it out. So the problems that I'm trying to pinpoint is that it is a lack of data. Only 3,000 3, data points, super overfitting. But more interesting is that it works well on the validation and the testing data, which is more weird.
read. Uh, the problem is also because of the data set are uh, so similar. There's no uh, much diversity on the, on the data set because I collect the data from just on my eyes. And also the, the lightning and the lightning condition, lighting condition, uh, are just like some, sometimes I sit in here, sometimes I sit in there, not much everybody, every place else. I didn't do outdoors. So it doesn't have much diversity or in the data set. Yeah, the same, uh, the same point. So data points, each data points are so similar Despite that, it is all unique, I check. I, I, I really ensure that it's unique, but it, are, it is so similar to each other. Maybe the data set didn't cover the true distribution because um, I only collect my eyes and my friends, what the seven billion others too. So it may not cover the true distribution of the problems. At the same point, sorry. So I do pinpoint, I group up all the problems that I think it might be. It comes to the fact that it, it has a really lack of, data, a lack, lack of data. So I try to increase the data by using different techniques. You can see uh, first, I do data augmentation. I randomly rotate. I translate some of the image. I change the brightness. Um, I change the contrast, etc. I also generate new images using an, an animated tools, very cool tools, called Unity Eyes from Cambridge University. It has the ability to uh, generate like an animated, uh, as you can see, animated, animated version of the eye. It can look around like that. So I can increase the number, the total, num the total numbers of data, of data points to 6,000. And I also use uh, the generative adversarial networks to uh, generate fake image for the training. But actually, I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't include it into the data set because, as you can see over here, it was, yeah, I see on, on on the right is the generated fake image. It doesn't really realistic so much that I put it into the training set. So, what are the solution? Actually, I don't know. I'm looking for a solution. Yeah, yeah that's all. I'm ho hoping, I, ho I hope that I can find a solution from all of you talents guys. Thank you. Can we take the questions? Do you have yeah. any questions? Yeah, do you have any questions or answers? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I have a constraint is that um, there's a many retrain models that I, can, that I can use for transfer learning, but they are usually very big, very large, and I want to fit it into a Raspberry Pi board, which is quite unreal. impractical. It's consumed a lot of memories and a lot of computational time, which is unsolvable by a Raspberry Pi. So I didn't do it. But let's say um, you still have to transfer the information, a sequence of image, the data, 
to the server or something else, and that may be um, a latency, maybe like sl maybe slow slowing down the process of the things. So maybe as I'm predicting the models on the Raspberry Pi, maybe faster than transfer the whole bunch of data to some servers and get the result back. So I didn't. Okay, I, I, um, I would think about it. I would try to see maybe it better if we can use it. But the, another point is that I don't want to make the models big or large because it can easily overfit the data because I don't have much data and data collection is very expensive. So here's a, here's a post that you can go home and check out. This is from Apple. And it's basically using uh, GAN. A Apple, yeah, using GANs to do exactly oh, what yeah. you do. So just use a better quality GAN. Yeah. Uh, and Apple, Apple had the exact same issue. Uh, so yeah, there's all. If anyone's interested, this is on the uh, Apple has a blog. Yeah, I have saw that. Uh, mm. That basically shows like some of the uh, research papers that they're doing inside Apple and stuff like that. And one of their first, in fact, I think it was their first one, was basically using GANs to to come up with i i axes and queues. Anyway, that was a great talk. Yep. Great. Thank you.